Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, a bill that has been introduced into the Florida legislature could leave Disney and other businesses in Florida liable for a mass shooting. Disney CEO Bob Iger decides to skip a meeting with the president, and speculation is heating up as to whether or not Iger is actually going to retire next year as planned. Also, Paddlefish opened this past weekend at Disney Springs, and I have a few thoughts about the restaurant to share with you. And a little later on, we're going to talk about a thread trending on disboards.com this week about the best extra cost experiences at Walt Disney World. All that coming up next. From the Bob Varley studio in Orlando, Florida, this is the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 928 for the week of February 7th, 2017. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. Experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Pete Werner, joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi. Hi, everybody. Kevin Close. Hi, everyone. Teresa Eccles. Hey. Corey Martin. I'm just happy to be here. Back in the production nook, our associate producer, Oliver Green. Hello. Along with our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Hello. Well, hope everyone is having a good week so far. A uh, couple things I just want to mention in housekeeping. First off, uh, the Diz 20th anniversary celebration coming up. What do we say the dates? We have official dates now. Um, well, the, we've held the rooms May 26th through June 4th, 2017. Uh, our events will take place during the week, Monday through Friday, with our big event happening on June 1st, 2017, which is a Thursday, and that's the actual anniversary of the event. So there'll be sort of other things going on during the week. We don't know what yet, but we're working on those. And hotel rooms are selling fast. I had to ask for more rooms. I was surprised at how much we've sold, mm, so yep. I had to go through and ask this for more This is going to be a big event, and I think we're going to have registration up soon, too. Um, as soon as we get some of the details of having knowing where we're going to have you know like we did for the mega meet we'll have like a registration room and a place where we'll have the uh, auction stuff so once we know where that is then we'll get the registration form up so that just until we have some more details so, so we promise we're working on it i promise i think that's uh, I, I think it's like the 28th through the second mm -hmm. uh, right. are the actual dates uh, may 28th through june 2nd correct uh, are the dates that we'll be holding events. And as John said, June 1st, 20th anniversary of the Diz. We'll have a big show uh, for that, planning a lot of stuff. I uh, want to um, let people know that not only will you hear about the information on the show, but if you go to the boards, there's a thread, and that's usually where the stuff will show up first. If you follow a thread on the Diz boards about the 20th anniversary. It's on the Diz Unplugged. Uh, Diz Unplugged forum. And that's where they'll see the information right away, so you got up-to-the-minute information. One of the things you asked me about is possible. Ooh, what was that? Yeah, but well, how much? <laughs> if all things are possible, if you're willing to spend the money. Teresa can't get paid for a year, <laughs> but it's possible. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, it's going to be something like that. So it's $80. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> $80. So, all right. And I know, Corey, you had something you wanted to... Uh, yeah, we, um, we added a new shirt to our Diz merchandise store. It's uh, titled The uh, Professional Disney Fan. It's a really cool design. You should see the, the brainstorming that uh, Will and I go through. And we do it all through text, which is funny. Oh, I'm sorry. No, we literally, it's all through text. We don't even like pick up the phone, but we, we end up texting back and forth. But I think it's a fun shirt. We have um, and it shows. Se several uh, color varieties. I'm just kidding. Really and, and, nice and little did I know, I um, <laughs> at the Paddlefish Media event, I, I showed it to Pete, and he goes, "Do you know that's my what I have in my uh, your bio for Twitter?" On right? uh, Twitter, yeah, I had I, no clue. I call myself a professional Disney had fan. No clue, I am a professional Disney fan. It's I mean, really, funny. it's what yeah. I do for a living. There you go. Check it out. There's a link on the homepage of the Diz. And honestly, and again, I he he showed it to me at Paddlefish because I yell at him. Because Rhino will walk in here wearing a shirt, <laughs> one of our shirts. I'm like, oh, my God, where did you get that? He's like, oh, it's on our store. I'm like, it's really nice that I know about this. <laughs> um, some amazing designs up there. Uh, the Diz Pride shirt, I absolutely love. The Apple Bacon Whoopie Pie, I wear those two shirts, I think, more than <laughs> any other shirts I own. 
uh, the apple bacon whoopie pie shirt I love. It's a lot of great, uh, a lot of great shirts on the store. We'll have links to that in the show notes page, disunplugged.com. Um, also on disunplugged.com, you can find links to all our other shows. Every Monday, the Dreams Unlimited Travel Podcast with John, Kevin, and Tracy Heinrichs. And uh, what do we got this week, John? Uh, this past week on Monday, we talked about the Harmony of the Seas, our two-night pre-inaugural sailing. And that actually, we had some other folks on that. Corey was on that show as well. And then coming up this upcoming Monday, we're going to be talking about Disney Cruise Line itineraries. Uh, We talk quite a bit about ships and entertainment and food, but we want to talk about the places that Disney Cruise Line actually visits. And people try, a lot of people plan their cruises around the destination and less around the ship. So try to cover that as much as possible. Okay. So that's uh, Monday on disunplug.com. You can also subscribe. Uh, to the Dreams Unlimited Travel uh, channel on YouTube, youtube.com slash Dreams Unlimited Travel. Uh, also, every Monday, the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged with Tom Bell and his team. And this week, in honor of the big game, Tony Spatel has some tips for adding a professional sporting event to your Disneyland vacation. Uh, in- enjoy the nine people that are going to listen to that, Tom. Um, <laughs> kidding. <laughs> You're right, it's only seven. Seven, yeah. At 12. Uh, every Wednesday, uh, the best and worst of Walt Disney World. And what's this week, uh, Oliver? This week we are discussing the top five things that you can do at Walt Disney World outside of the theme parks. So a lot of recreation stuff, some stuff at Disney Springs. I'm not going to give too much away. So, uh, yeah, tune in and, uh, and listen to that. And every Thursday, disunplug.com, the Universal Edition of the Disunplugged with... Craig, Rhino, and Oliver, and what's coming up this Thursday? This Thursday, we are discussing Universal Mardi Gras. It started on Saturday, so we all went as a, for a big fun time. And, Les yeah. bon temps roulés. And we'll talk about it this <laughs> Thursday. Stop gibbering. <laughs> <laughs> that was only said like 10 times. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> and, of course, every Friday, uh, disunplug.com, dispop. With Rhino Clavin, and it's just Rhino now. I mean, he's he's abandoned using other people. He has he? a uh, he has a special guest on this week. Oh, he wouldn't okay. say who. Okay, well, it's this Beyonce week to talk about the twins, right? This week, apparently, it is all about Pixar films. Uh, Rhino will be taking a look at some of the traditional Easter eggs that can be found in almost all the Pixar movies. And if you want to know where you can spot them, tune into Diz Pop this Friday. And I'm reading just what he wrote for me. So that's our slate of shows coming up. Uh, this week, what else do we have for housekeeping? I have a little trivia. Mm-hmm. Today in 1940, Pinocchio was released for the first time. Pinocchio is 77 today. Wow. Did you know that uh, Sunday marked four years since our first live show? <coughs> I did not. Yeah. not. Wow. It's been four years that we've been doing <laughs> the live show. Did we get Really? No, no one, no one brought me tribute. But yeah, four years. Um, so technically this show... Four years ago was our first live show. And we did 900 and something episodes in four years? No, no, no. Honey, that's since in 10 years. Oh. That's in, that counts all the audio. The audio shows <laughs> count. No wonder I'm tired. No, I was say, no wonder I'm tired. <laughs> 928 shows we've done. This is our 928th show. Did you count the bad ones? <laughs> then it would be 927. <laughs> um, Got to do something when we get to 1,000. No. We should just make it fall. <laughs> Officially, on. I'm saying no. <laughs> <laughs> you can either celebrate the 20th anniversary or do something when we get to 1,000. Let's do something for 1,000. Like, <laughs> Can't we just number them differently? <laughs> really? Start counting by three. <laughs> right. So, anything else? Anything else for housekeeping? All right, then we'll throw it over to Johnny with the news. All right, our first news story NRA backed measure proposes to hold gun banning Florida businesses liable. Senate Judiciary Chairman Greg Stubbe, a conservative Republican out of Sarasota, has proposed a measure in the Florida legislature that could have a profound impact on the, on the rights of business owners as well as concealed carry permit holders. The proposal, SB 610, is intended to hold businesses that ban guns responsible in the event that a possibly deadly incident occurs on their premises. The reasoning is if a concealed carry permit holder is not allowed to bring their firearm into an establishment due to a business's decision to ban guns from their property, and an incident occurs from mass shootings to an animal attack, uh, 
It's the, the Grizzlies in the schools. The business owners could be held liable due to their failure to provide adequate protection while restricting the gun owner's ability to defend themselves. The bill would open businesses up to lawsuits seeking damages, attorney's fees, and court costs, with liability lasting up to two years after the incident. This measure is backed by the National Rifle Association and joins a significant list of gun-related bills proposed by Stubbe. Um, I won't go into the rest of it. There's a lot of technical stuff, but techni- but what a lot of this says is there's no other backing in um, uh, from either Florida businesses or in the government for this bill, and it's been introduced a couple days ago and nothing has gone forward with it so that's just pro- where we stand with the bill being introduced. well if it does if it was to get any traction i think the nra would come up against its most uh well-funded uh, opponent in disney um disney spends a lot of money on lobbyists especially here in florida they have an enormous amount of influence this would be a blood feud. Yeah. I think it's important to, to understand, too, that this isn't saying businesses have to allow you to bring guns in. This isn't a measure that's saying businesses now are going to be legislated to say you have to allow people to carry guns in if they have a carry permit. What they're saying is if something happens, like a grizzly attack, <laughs> that you can then sue them. I'm not a lawyer, like but doesn't it make sense that if you, you ma- <laughs> not even that. But doesn't it make sense that if you agree to enter a property where you were told you couldn't bring your gun, that you're then assuming responsibility for the grizzly attack? If, you have a right, if that you're told you can't bring your gun, you also have the right not to, to not enter. enter. Mm. True. Part, yeah, part right. of what it says on your Disney ticket is that Disney's not held responsible for anything that Any occurs. But, right, anything that occurs that could cause harm. I want to look over the at the camera's still on me, so <laughs> gun owner. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, look, I, I'm a gun owner, but I don't have a concealed weapons permit because I know I know. You my want people to see your gun? I know my limitations. I know I have it's a not very big. I, I'm I, have, sorry. I have an attitude, and and I, I don't think it's right for me to have one in the car. Personally, that's just me. Yeah, I've yeah I've heard stories <laughs> so of your driving just anger. To bring this down to my level, and it's way down here. Y'all know that. Okay, so. I got a gun. I got a permit to take it with me to Disney. Now you're telling, but Disney's telling me I can't bring it in now. Right, you go to the metal detector. They say you they can't take, bring take that your in. Gun. Okay. So if I go in and a grizzly attacks me in the Magic Kingdom, then I can sue Disney. Right. Because you were not either protected by Disney or you were not given the ability to protect yourself. But this Mr. Stuby wants me to take my gun in. Yes. And protect myself and other people with my gun? No, that, who you protect is up to you. My guns are mainly for home defense, like home protection. And that's where they stay. They stay in the home. I, I don't have one in the car um, for my personal reasons. I don't, yeah, I don't think that this would change Disney's view of whether or not you can bring a gun into their theme park. You have an option to not go in. If you're afraid of grizzly attacks or mass murderers inside a, and now, a business. And now what you're doing, though, is if this passes, then you open up legislation that people can then sue and say, I'm not allowed to go in. I'm not even given that option to enter. So that opens up other things. See, the problem I have is that I would like to bring that gun in and then go on Small World and see how many dolls so I can take, take out. Take it out. <laughs> yeah. Get out little people. That's my favorite. Oh, is it? Uh-huh. Um, it's messed up, John. Is it messed up? Yeah, so that's that. Okay. I thought it would be more conversation than that. Oh, well. So did I. But <coughs> I got nothing for That's you. because we're all sitting here trying to be really good. Yeah, 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 we are. All right. Because um, the word nitwit would come up. <laughs> I also think, too, I'm gonna, I will go to a controversial place. One of the things that this proposes is that it's going to be retroactive for two years. So you're talking about perhaps somebody in the the pulse shooting could raise a um, a lawsuit against well, the person. By the time this ends up, if if they were to ever pass right. that, by the time this ends up going through the court system, um, yeah, it's ridiculous. Do other states have this? No, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. so Not that I've heard. They may. No, this is a Florida thing. This is a Florida thing. Um, you know. I don't know. Maybe he wants maybe he wants more money for his campaign from the NRA. Land of the free, home of the wacko. Oh. All right. Moving Whoa. on to our second news story. Yeah, there okay. it is. Right. Nice transition. He pushed it just where he wanted it, and then he moves on. <laughs> That's right. Disney CEO Robert Iger could extend his tenure. 
According to the Wall Street Journal, Disney CEO Robert Iger most likely isn't going to be stepping down from his position at Disney anytime soon. There is increasing speculation that Bob Iger will be extending his tenure for a third time. In a statement from the Wall Street Journal, a Disney executive said, quote, The prevailing theory is that Bob will have to extend to train his replacement, extend his tenure to replace his to train his replacement. There will be a steep learning curve for whoever comes in, and no one believes Bob or the board wants to set someone up for failure. You mean they have to put someone qualified in this job? I know. Someone who actually would have experience? Someone would know what this job entailed before we just agreed to put them in? Interesting concept. Yeah, I wonder how that works. After Tom Staggs left the company early last year, there suddenly was no clear successor to Iger. With only 16 months left until Bob Iger's planned retirement, it is hard to envision a successor lining up and taking over in that time. Um, and they're hoping that more details of this will come during the uh, annual shareholder meeting on March 3rd. Well, I, uh, you know, I, I thought, I felt when they got rid of Tom Staggs that. There was no way. There was no way he was going to leave in 2018. Um, there's nobody in the company that they're really floating any names for in terms of who would replace him. So the speculation has been that it was going to be somebody from outside. Uh, Reed Hastings, uh, the, the head of... Uh, Hastings Pudding? Yes, of Netflix, <laughs> is one of the names that's floated. It's been floated. Um, has been floated as a possible... Uh, as someone they might possibly tap for this would be interesting um but they they're gonna want somebody who's got that background in film and television um so he might be an that might be an interesting choice i don't know but they don't have anybody and they can't it's not what is it 16 17 months before he's supposed to step down um they're not going to get anybody in place i wonder what that says for the people who are directly under him that they're that he hasn't considered any of them for the position or, bu- or bubbled their name up. Well, you had uh, oh, what was his name? Um, it was between Tom Staggs and Jay Rasulo, and when Jay Rasulo didn't get it, he retired. Um, and so, you know, those were the two that were duking it out for the job. And the board, according to you know what we've heard. The board of directors was not sure they wanted Tom Staggs in the role. And Tom Staggs wanted them, after Shanghai Disney opened, he wanted them to announce that he was the heir apparent. They wouldn't do it, and that was why he left. Um, so now they're, you know, and but what's weird is that, I mean, there's been rumblings of names here and there, but nothing concrete. You'd think they'd really start floating some stuff. Um, so I wonder, maybe he just doesn't want to leave. I also think the shareholders don't want him to leave. Yeah, I don't he's think been good. He's been good for business. Yeah. There's no, you know, look, and honestly, it's not, we're not in a situation with Bob Iger that we were in at the end of Eisner's tenure. Eisner was roundly hated inside and outside the company. Um, at, by you know, and he was forced out. He was forced out. That was the last thing that, uh, that uh, Roy Disney did mm-hmm. uh, before he retired was he wanted to see he wanted to get Eisner out of there, and so that's not the scenario here. Iger is pretty well liked. I mean, I don't think he in- inspires lots of enthusiasm among Disney fans, but he certainly doesn't inspire any derision either. Yeah. It's I think he's doing know, a good job. I think he steers the ship in the right direction. I think some of the things that have come out under his command have been great. And some stuff has been okay, but I don't think he's right. He's no Eisner, where people were like, "Oh, you're ruining Disney and you're ruining the." Reputation. See, but I think I also think that I mean I think Eisner kind of went off the rails at the end, but I don't think Eisner gets the credit he deserves for turning he the company the around. Company. Yeah. He saved the company. He saved the company. Um, him and Frank Wells saved Disney. What we love about Disney now is almost entirely part of the Eisner Wells era what they did when they came in and really kind of reinvented Disney. And so, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm in no rush to see Iger go. Um, I'd rather them take the time to find the right person. Mm-hmm. Um, then, so yeah, he can hang out for as long as he needs to, but I just want to, I, I want them to get the right guy or, or woman. 
for that matter. That would be awesome. Put a woman at the helm of Disney. But does anybody think that's going to happen? Well, the problem, like you said, there's no names out there. It's not even like we can look at these people and say, well, there is someone we think would do a good job or do a bad job. There's no name being floated. Yeah. Yeah. The, I, I know there have been a couple. The one that really stuck out to me was the head of Netflix. Um, I thought that was very interesting. This is a guy that's got, you know, a, a, an aggressive business mind. And look what he did with Netflix. I mean, he's done amazing for Netflix. So whether that would translate over to a company like Disney, because that's the other problem. Is Disney's not just a movie studio. Yeah. Disney isn't just a merchandise brand. It's Disney just- isn't just a theme park company. It's all of those things. And they're really successful in all of those areas. So you've got to have somebody that can manage it across the board. So we'll find out. Agreed. All right, our third and final news story. Disney CEO Bob Iger did not attend meeting in White House with President Donald Trump. Last uh, last year, Bob Iger, chairman and CEO of the Walt Disney Company, was asked to be part of the President's Strategic and Policy Forum. The group is scheduled to meet regularly with President Donald Trump. The first meeting uh, took place this past Friday. Bob Iger did not attend this meeting due to a company board meeting that was set in place several months ago. <clears throat> Iger was reportedly, quote, one of the only entertainment industry execs slated to appear at the event, which was organized by Blackstone chairman Stephen Schwartzman. Iger's planned participation was criticized by some in the studio, especially animators. In early December, Trump had billed the event as a meeting of CEOs and business leaders who know what it takes to create jobs and drive economic growth. Uber CEO Travis Kalanick uh, was also previously scheduled to attend the forum, but resigned a few days prior to the first meeting in response to pressure from his employees and customers in the wake of Trump's immigration plan. Among those who did attend were Indra Nui, chairman and CEO of Pepsi Company, Doug McMillan, president and CEO of Walmart, James Dimon, uh, chairman, president and CEO of J.P. Diamond. Mor- Di- Jamie Diamond. Diamond. Yeah. Uh, Mary Barrow, uh, head of General Motors, uh, Ginny Romney, uh, IBM, Elon Musk, CEO and CTO of SpaceX, uh, Tesla, Solar City, and everything else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Welsh, former chairman and CEO of General Electric, uh, Jim McNeary, former president and CEO of Boeing. And there were 17 altogether. I just picked the ones I thought we would recognize yeah. as far as so, companies. A couple, couple things. Uh, when we posted this story, we posted this story before – it uh, really got picked up by the national news outlets. Now, they didn't pick it up from us. Um, but uh, when we posted this, we got a lot of flack from people mm-hmm. calling it fake news. A um, clickbait. And clickbait yeah. and all this other stuff. Um, well, we posted that he might not attend was the original story, right? Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, well, they, they, Disney had announced he wasn't attending. He was right. not going to attend. Um and, uh, you know, it's only fake news if it's fake. <laughs> this was a real story. And we just reported it. We didn't speculate on his reasons. We didn't weigh in politically. But even this, even this generated all this nonsense that we see on, on social media. Um, of course, within 24 hours, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. And again, I'm not saying they picked it up from us. They didn't. But because it's a real story. It's a real story. And if you think it's fake because, oh, no, he had a board meeting. You don't go to a board meeting when you're asked to attend a meeting with the president of the United States. You move the board meeting. That's the kind of excuse you throw out. And I, I find that excuse almost... Soporific. I think um, the original thing was, <coughs> I think I'm getting sick. <coughs> yeah. Um, so <coughs> now I don't know what the reason, maybe maybe it is because it's politically charged and Iger doesn't want to put himself in the middle of it or put Disney in the middle of it. Could be that. I don't know. I have no idea. But I'll tell you this. He didn't miss that meeting because he had a board meeting. No. Because it wasn't like it was the annual meeting. No. It wasn't the big one. You know, it was. And we also source it from The Onion. So it was very, <laughs> you know, reputable. And so we, we knew it was real. So it, it's, 
you know, what, what the reasons are, I don't know. Um, that story didn't speculate. I can do that here. But um, the nonsense that goes on with anything you don't agree with, anything that's not, and this is on both sides, but more on one than the other, um, anything that is not flattering to the person you support is automatically labeled fake news. That needs to stop. That needs to stop because the guy actually didn't show up. Right, exactly. So it wasn't fake news. It was real. It was a it was a properly sourced story. And the guy didn't show up at the meeting. You can speculate on your own why. If you want to believe it was because of a board meeting, okay. If you want to believe there was something else going on, okay. But the fact of the matter is, Iger didn't show up at the meeting. That says something. To me, that says something. I know Kevin is sitting over there <laughs> biting his lip. <laughs> There's no good going to come of it. I just am going to shut up. I actually think I respect anyone's decision to do or not do whatever they want. I kind of think the guy from Uber should have gone. I believe that if you have the chance to influence politics, you have the chance to influence people, and your your opinion is against. See, I agree with that. I think he should have gone. And I think whatever Iger's reason for not going, I think he should have gone. You have the president's ear. This is your opportunity to get in front of him and say, this is the reason why we should be doing certain things. If you're coming to me for for that advice, if you're approaching me for that advice, here's what I'm going to tell you. So I kind of think, especially the guy from Uber should have gone because he had a very valid point. Personally, I think Iger should have gone. Yeah. You know, we just got done talking about how responsibly and how well he's run Disney. I would kind of like that voice right. in the ether when certain decisions are being made. I'd like to know that there are sober, responsible people feeding information to the president, um, regardless of who the president is. Said the same thing when Bush was in. Um, and so I, I, I think he should have gone, personally. Especially, but, too, he's also, he was the only entertainment person from the entertainment industry. So that's a pretty heavy responsibility. Scott and, Baio wasn't there. No, Baio was not advising the president. Well, Neither Cher wasn't invited. I was oh, surprised. Really. Um, I love Cher. We have to take the emojis away from her. That's yeah, all we do. <laughs> <laughs> when we see her next month, uh, in the next two weeks, I'm going to talk to her. It's hieroglyphics. Is there, honey? It is. And You're not Egyptian. Thing, Stop. <laughs> the other thing that I didn't like about this panel that was put together was except for Elon Musk, there was really no tech people there. There was nobody from Silicon Valley. There was nobody. And I mean, these are the people who have created the most jobs in the last four to eight years. So it just seems to me that's strange that that part of the job <clears throat> producing industries are not being included in well, this. I have a feeling this is not the last story like this we're going to talk about over the course of the next four or eight years. So, um, all, all right. right. With that That'll do it for the news. Well, there's one more thing I do want to talk about, and that is about paddlefish. We'll change lanes quickly here. Um, uh, paddlefish, for those who are not aware, uh, is now, uh, it, it is the reimagination of what was Fulton's Crab House at, uh, at Disney Springs. And uh, that closed last March, I believe it was, and underwent a complete overhaul and uh, reopened this past weekend. Friday, uh, Craig, Corey, and I were there at uh, the preview, which was incredible. The place looks amazing. It does. I mean, let's start yeah. with that. It yep. looks amazing. I'm not going to go into a full review. I went back for dinner with my family on Saturday, and we have just posted a vlog of that experience up on YouTube. You can find out what I thought of the food um, and uh, some of the failures that happened that night. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about the preview. But in specific, one of the questions I've been getting asked, and I just forgot to mention it in the vlog. Um, a lot of people asking me uh, whether, you know, if you don't eat seafood, uh, is, it, you know, is it worth going there? And uh, when it was Fulton's Crab House, it was a seafood-heavy menu. There were some good non-seafood items, but it was limited. That is not the case here. They have a menu that is so balanced. I mean, a lot of really great seafood options, but an, a lot of great non-seafood options as well. A lot of times, 
if you're like me, not a seafood eater, and you go to a seafood restaurant, you got you got to kind of settle for second rate. And you're, either that or you're going to get a poor steak. You can either have right. fish or there's going to be your steak, which is not going to be. Or wedding reception chicken. Or wedding reception chicken. <laughs> I will tell you, I will tell you the non-seafood items on this menu, and we tried a number of them, um, were so far from that. They, I mean, signature quality, with the exception of my steak, go watch the review on YouTube, um, were excellent. Um They've put together an amazing menu, and the food. Talk talk a little bit about what what really grabbed you. Well, some preview. of the some of the things that um like the the lobster corn dog. I mean, we had samples, so this was more like a, a cocktail type party. So things were things were uh, the portions weren't the way you would receive them. The um like the lobster roll, we had a sample of it, but they use an entire lobster in this sandwich, and yeah. they, they had they had one on display. So you're not being cheated on meat. You may be on the size of lobster, but I don't know. But the um, I thought the quality of everything. They had uh, an ahi tuna bacon. I, it's it Corey was a, lost his stuff I, I, when he saw the ahi tuna. Y'all go walk around. I'm stay corn right dog? Here. The lobster corn dog it, was, it was awesome. On, corn it was dogs are perfect as they are. <laughs> no, this <laughs> what, I, I, I enjoyed it. I ate it. You're also talking like, to someone who'd rather have a hot dog more than a lobster. I would much rather so have that, a hot take dog than a steak. So. Me I, too. Me too. But this was delicious. But I had to tell Pete because, you know, he doesn't really eat seafood. So I'm like, you need to try this. You're, it's not going to taste fishy at all. And it was – I thought the food was great. I want to go back and actually experience it the way it should be because, like I said, everything was, you know, cocktail type. Uh, Previews servings. are tough. Opening is yeah. tough. My, my, suggestion, my suggestion to folks, absolutely try this restaurant. Wait a few weeks. Wait a few weeks. They were not. The kitchen was not ready. Yeah. Service oh. staff was. Service staff was. But it took. I mean, our app. We, we got there at like six o'clock. Our appetizers came out. They they gave us plenty of time to get settled and just have you know have drinks and um, ordered our appetizers. They came out in a timely fashion. They were delicious. <clears throat> then the restaurant started to get busy. An hour and twenty minutes to get our main courses, cool. and we were lucky. We were lucky. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people got up and left. People were walking out of the restaurant. It was that bad. Um, now, when the food finally came, it was, it was excellent. It was absolutely excellent. So the hard part they've got down, they do really well, really good food. They do it really well. It's the timing in the kitchen. The kitchen was not ready, and why they chose to open on a Saturday night to make that your grand opening, I think that was a bad choice. They should have opened this on a Monday and worked their way into it. But um, I, I, but I, I felt from the preview, they definitely kicked everything up several notches. Decor, and I enjoyed Fulton's. I enjoyed it. We uh, went there right before close for their brunch, and it was wonderful. It's even better now. It's the freshness that goes along with it. Even um, so, like the lobster roll, you know, Corey just mentioned they use a whole lobster in it. But beyond that, too, the mayo that's kind of the base for the the lobster to all go together with the sandwich. They said they make that mayo fresh in house. Yeah. Um, all the cocktails that they made specifically for here are, you know, they're starting to turn into craft cocktails. It, takes time and appreciation to make them. The desserts, which I don't believe you had any in your video, but now, at that point. Uh, yeah. I was afraid that we'd be there at midnight waiting for a brownie. Well, so. they had this carrot cake that they gave us to sample, <laughs> and the um, the cream that they used for the carrot cake, again, made in-house, all the cake made in-house. It might have been one of the best desserts I've had on Disney property. How do you make cream in-house? I don't know how they do that, <laughs> but they did it. They found a way. They have, now, a, they have I, a cow. The other thing I, I want to say. This starts at a cow. You, you, you might get a little sticker shock looking at the prices on the menu because it's definitely up there mm -hmm. uh the portion sizes of the appetizers and the and the main courses are ample so it really it's not one of those scenarios where they're charging 35 dollars, 40 dollars for an entree and you're getting you know a little tiny portion of everything by the time we were done with appetizers we were like oh crap we got a we got a main course coming you could have made a meal out of the appetizers. Um, I also want to say that like this is prime location. It, it, it always has been. That's why it hasn't moved. But 
the uh, with all the things that are being built at Disney Springs now, you go on that top deck, like at, at sunset, it's beautiful. You see, you have this this view of Disney Springs, which is it's I awesome. Just want to go back over a second. The word handcrafted is starting to become like artisanal. It's overused. I'm done. Okay, I'll make a shirt. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll add that. You and Will can text about it. But I really do highly recommend checking this place out. I give it, give it a month. Give it a month. Let them, they just, they got, like I said, they got the hard stuff down. The, the, the quality, the, the, the presentation, the, the, the flavors in the food, phenomenal. Uh, it's the timing of the kitchen. It's the timing in the kitchen that's off. Service is there. These servers, I can't, I could not believe how well trained these servers were. She knew her stuff. Crystal was her name. She was amazing. She knew her stuff. She knew her menu. And I said to them, how long, I said to her, how long have you been training? And she said, every day for five weeks. Hmm. Yeah. Every day. Sorry. And she's like, I can't find the oh. answer to the question I have. I don't know we why didn't talk to you, Alexa. Alexa is. Can I hit the mute button on her? Um, Did you change your name from Alexa to Crystal? <laughs> yeah. um, Crystal. Sorry. Crystal's hacked your Alexa. Yeah, really. Um, it does that all the time, which is really weird. Uh, but uh, I, she's still going. Unplug her. Um, so... So I really would recommend it. They, they, they did a great job with the exception of the, the timing issue in the kitchen. But I understood that it was opening night, working out the kinks. Give it a month. And I'm telling you, this is going to be one, this is going to be one popular place on, uh, on property. Yeah. So Cool. All right. With that, we are going to move on. And I believe uh, that, do we have, there we go. We've got Rhino and Steve over in the Magic Kingdom. How are you guys? Good. Good. And uh, what are you doing? Um, well, we did a, uh, a uh, we went around to look for hidden Mickeys in Tomorrowland today. And we thought that would be fun to uh, maybe put that out there for our Patreon folks. Give them something a little extra. Yep. And we started off today. We went to uh, Captain Cook's for breakfast. So I got some Mickey waffles. And um, but yeah, it was good. How, how, was, how was breakfast at Captain Cook's? Oh, it's always, I love Captain Cook's. That's my favorite, probably my favorite quick service location on Walt Disney World property up there with uh, the Harambe Market in Animal Kingdom. Okay. I did not eat there. <laughs> so Steve went by himself? Yeah, I was just staring at him while he ate his waffles. <laughs> True. Oh, you went, you just didn't eat. I was, yeah, that's yeah, what I was, met him because I was, we were going to do something at the Polynesian and then... Uh, there was a bad accident on I-4, so I was too close to, to do what I wanted to do. And where are you right now? You up on Main Street? We're on the train station, which is currently closed for refurbishment, it looks like. And um, so it's kind of dead up here. I don't think people understood that the second level was still open. Yep. So, so you can come up here. Ourselves. Yeah, and it's shaded. And you get a great view. And we were why watching did, the uh, why don't you give people? Park. Why don't you give people a view down Main Street? Okay. Boop. There were some cars out here a few minutes ago. Wow, it looks dead. It does look dead. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Is the cast member going on lunch, I see? And <laughs> so is that... <laughs> right? uh, there was so, a bunch of the... Yeah, there you go. There you, there you go. The um, stitch down there. I can't zoom in, can I? I don't think I can. No. Um, yeah. So I, I'm, from that, it would look like the park is not very busy today. Yeah, uh, the wait, it's kind of de deceptive, though. I think the Magic or Main Street is kind of emptied out, but the wait times for some of the rides have been, like, Buzz was 40 minutes, which is a little higher than it usually is. Yeah, yeah, there was actually, like, a full carousel of progress. Yeah, um, that was surprising. The, the people mover went down, so if you're in the park watching this right now, don't go over there. It's closed right now. Yeah. That's been happening a lot just lately, I've noticed. Every time I've been in Magic Kingdom, the people mover's been down. It's crazy. It's Kathy noticed it, too. She wanted to get stuck on it. I wonder why. Because mm -hmm. so, they walk you off, so you get to walk through yeah, all that stuff. Because we were in Star Traders, and we could see all the people walking by. And we're lucky. <laughs> um, anything else going on today? Um, I don't know. What are you... What are you thinking? Yeah, uh, I have fast passes for Space Mountain, so I'm probably going to do that after this. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <laughs> do they know that this is going to happen, or are you surprising them when you Apparently call? Apparently, I'm surprising them. 
So well, I'm going home after this because then we're doing a dining review later. So I got to go let my dogs out. So it's Steve's going to fly solo for a little bit. Who let the dogs out? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jokes. Well, you guys enjoy the rest of your day, Rhino. I'll see you a little later on. Okay. See you guys. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. So, all right. There's that. It's old. What's that? <laughs> oh, Corey and his old jokes. It's dad jokes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Rapid Fire. John, we'll start with you. All right, there's a brand new Ultimate Disney Classics VIP tour at the Magic Kingdom. Um, this Ultimate Disney Classics VIP tour is now available for booking, and it's a four-hour guided tour that will allow guests to experience quintessential Magic Kingdom attractions in a carefree environment, uh, carefree manner. Uh, you can experience up to 10 of the most beloved Magic Kingdom Park attractions that do not have height requirements. So this is really nice for families with little kids. You don't have to worry about you know them not being able to go on the rides. Uh, there'll be a stop along the way to meet Mickey Mouse himself. The price for the tour is $199 per person, and it's offered Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays, subject to availability. Do they say which attractions it is? Up to 10. Up to 10. Yeah. So I guess it depends on what's open, what's you know, what they can get to, how fast the group is moving along. But if, if they're all the height, no height requirements, it seems like it's probably fantasy land yeah. type stuff and small world. And so what they're like doing that. is selling front of the line access. Yeah, exactly. For hundred and ninety nine yep. years ago. Well, we we you know there had been speculation would they start selling fast passes, and apparently this is what they're trying out before they go that route. These VIP tours are also they're really trying a whole bunch of different stuff. You know they've got the ultimate VIP tour where they'll have cars waiting for you backstage and take you from park to park and things like that. I just think this is one of those extended things that they're right. trying. When out. people use their handicapped accessibility passes <laughs> to do this, they were thrown out of the park and reviled. Now Disney's doing it. Well, because they weren't handicapped. I know. Were, you know I understand. I'm not saying that I don't see them but, at the same thing. But Disney's taking that model then of hiring a private guide and getting you front of the line access. Sure, because there's money involved. You know. The other thing, too, is that park admission is still required. So this is $199 in addition to your theme park admission. I wouldn't be surprised. They're going to do this quite a bit. They're, they're trying out all of these VIP mm, yeah. tours to see how they can make more money. And people do them. Yeah. I don't think it's a, you know, I don't think it's a terrible idea. Um, Later on, we're going to talk about the threat of the week. And one of the things I, I say is this is one of those things where you have more money than time. You know, mm -hmm. if your time is limited and you have... You can only do a certain amount, and you've got the funds to do it. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. Yeah, I'm surprised this doesn't if this doesn't cause as big as an uproar as the one where they were selling extra time in the park, where they have that after hours party, and people were hysterical over the fact that Disney should be the same price for everybody. This is they're doing another thing. This is that you can buy better service. Yeah, but that all that all died down pretty fast. That all died down pretty fast. I think um, once people started doing the after hours and they were seeing that, you know, people liked it. Well, I think um, people are going to like this if they now, buy it, too. Uh, I also, I think, I don't know if people will start complaining unless there's a there's something that affects them personally. Unless somebody gets ahead of them. Right. right. Yeah, I think the that's point at which you're standing in line and all of a sudden, you know, 20 people come through and they go, well, we're VIP tour guides leading people. And I don't think people would care about it. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Thank you, John. Kevin. I want to talk about our Italy cruise again. It's March 24th through the 31st, 2018. It's on Viking Ocean. It is on the Viking Sky. I have some information about it. The, uh, well, first of all, we've got about 46 people going with us at this point. We've got quite a group going. Uh, there's still rooms available. It's under 1,000 guests on the ship. I can keep going. Call me. Uh, I do have some information. They're offering a pre-stay in Rome for two nights. It's uh, $8.69, $8.99 a person. I apologize. Write to me. I'll tell you better. Uh, there's also two nights in Venice at the end of the cruise, if that's what you'd like to do. And I just found out that they're offering a three-night pre-stay in Tuscany. It's $1,400 a person. And that's three nights, and that includes your transfers to the ship. 
There are a couple of things I have learned that are important, I think. First of all, I'm told that that Viking Ocean does not allow anything motorized on their ship. That means no electric scooters and no electric wheelchairs. If you need a scooter or a wheelchair, they will provide you with a folding wheelchair, but there's nothing electric allowed on board. Hmm. I think the... Um, the demographic of Viking skews older, and there could be. It's also a smaller ship. It's smaller, a smaller ship, and yeah, that there could be. There could be traffic jams. Okay. I also don't know the size of the elevators if the elevators right. are big enough. So, also, I think we want to point out with these pre and post night uh, add-ons, Viking doesn't know what hotels they're going to use. So it's a big if out there. We don't know where you're going to wind up. You so. don't know right. I had talked about... Well, a, I mean, those were averaging like $800 a night there uh, for those Rome ones and the Venice ones. So Now, this also includes meals right. and uh, um, excursions. Oh, okay. So there's more to it than that. Just the hotel. Okay. I just don't know if, the, if you're going to do better on your own. Like, for instance, I talked about a hotel that where they were going to use in Venice that I don't think is a very good choice for a tourist. Yeah. Um, it's the hotel ABD uses, of, actually. I would prefer to stay on the island of San Marco and not have to cross the Grand Canal staying in Venice. So I don't know what hotel they're going to use, but we will keep you up to date on that. I can tell you that the lower priced cabins are starting to sell out. If you're interested in looking at our information already, category V2. It's the, the, it's the cabin category up one from the very lowest price. That is already sold out. The lowest price stateroom is limited. If you're interested, those are moving really quickly. Okay. So. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, and there'll be sh uh, links on the show notes page to the thread on the Diz boards about it where this is all being discussed. If you go to that thread, you can also find our booking page and uh, the list of participants of other people who are going. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Teresa. All righty. Starring Rolls Cafe at Disney's Hollywood mm. Studios has closed. This blows my mind. Yeah. Why? Why is it closed? Because something else is going to go there, or is it closed? Star Wars <laughs> rolls. Star Wars <laughs> rolls. <laughs> Leia buns. buns. There you go. Um, it, uh, you can get some of the same food over at the Trolley Car Cafe. So I don't know if maybe something else is going in there. Is the Trolley Car Cafe permanent? I don't. I haven't been over there in a while. Starring rolls is pretty popular. I always enjoyed it. Go down the little steps there, and it was never, you know, horribly busy. So. I don't know. It doesn't but, seem like they need that space for anything, do they? They don't. I mean, with the Starbucks being right across the street, it's bigger. They already offered pretty much most of the same menu items, uh, plus the coffee. So um, they Starbucks going in kind of made it irrelevant. It's sad. No. Starbucks ruins everything. They do. <laughs> Thanks, Starbucks. Thanks, Starbucks. All right. Thank you, Teresa. All Go right. Um, Captain's Grill, one of the table service restaurants at uh, Disney's Yacht Club Resort, is getting ready to be furbished. Um, instead of closing, the restaurant will be um, relocated to Ariel's. Also, the Yacht Club, um, also at the Yacht Club, from mid-May until sometime. Uh, Ariel's is at the Beach Club. Sometime. Oh, Ariel's is, is not at the Yacht Club. Well, Ariel's is kind of in between. In between. It's, it's yeah, officially still, at the Beach the Club. The entrance is in the Beach Club. Yeah. So it's uh, from May some uh, till fall. Um, until it's completed. Details of what's being done hasn't so, been released, let's but hope, we'll keep you updated with whatever we find out. Let's hope they're gutting everything and starting this restaurant <laughs> all over again. Um, God in heaven. I was so happy to hear this. Also, I think it's it's kind of neat for people to experience aerials. Like it, That's something that's always, you kind of take that shortcut, well, the only way you can walk, um, but it's always caged off, mm -hmm. and you're like, what? We what had an agent. There? We've been yeah, in we've had an yeah, agent it, meeting in there. For events or it's whatever. for events. It's a really cool space. It's an awesome space. I don't know why they don't open it up again. The only thing I can think is I think it's far from the uh, kitchen. It's oh. not directly attached to a kitchen, so. But yeah, Captain's Grill. It's important. It's for not a one of the. It's not a destination that would be restaurant. Unfortunate. You don't go out of your way to eat there. Captain's, Captain's Grill. Yeah. yeah. Well, you should go out of your way to avoid <laughs> it. Um. After the hair on the plate scenario, that was Ooh. the end of it for me. Um, and then them suggesting that it was one of ours. Everybody at the table had short hair, like mine. This hair was about that long. Like, no, no, it didn't come from us. And it was at the bottom after, oh. after he got done eating his food. It's <laughs> complimentary dental floss. We ate there, and that's where the manager yelled at us. Yep. This was <laughs> 10 years ago, yep. but that's where he yelled at us. Yeah, so I'll be happy to go back and try it again. 
after they have just gutted everything and hopefully gutting the menu and combed all the hair out and got all yeah got the hair out of the food <laughs> um and oh, I remember we posted the picture of it, and somebody, you know, somebody said, "Oh, you planted that there." <laughs> Fake yeah, because that's what I do. <laughs> Fake hair. Um, <laughs> Pull it out of your little Ziploc bag. And no, I just have had so many. And I used to love Captain's Grill. I used to tell people to go there because it was like this hidden gem. And then the food just got crappy, and the service got crappy, and the attitude got crappy, and hair started showing up and stuff. Um, I after a certain the number section. of experiences. After a certain number of experiences like that, I gave up. Um, so after this, we'll give it a try and we'll see. So let's hope let's hope the fumigation works. Uh, thank you, Corey Oliver. Um, the express sorry the we don't know what it is yet. An express fresh pilot is to begin February seventh at the Contemporary and the Yacht Club. So in Walt Disney World's continuing quest to bring as many different food options to their guests as possible, a new option will be piloted at two on-property resort hotels beginning February 7th through April 1st. Uh, it's called Express Fresh, and it's a quick and casual option to complement the regular in-room dining menu, uh, and it's going to be offered at the Contemporary Resort and the Yacht Club Resort. Um, essentially, they bring things to your room in disposable containers, uh, food. You eat it. I like All that because I think it's gross. When you walk down the hallway and you can kind of see what every other room ate because yeah. they have their their, their 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 room service trays out there. You don't think they're going to be throwing out the empty containers in the hallway? Well, I, think, I don't know. But like when you see like a half-eaten pizza, one, I'm like, why didn't you eat the whole pizza? And then second, <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, it's pizza. gross. <laughs> I think it's designed to take with you. The whole point is like on the move. Like we'll bring it to you in the did morning. You, Here you go. Did you know that you. room service pizza at the All Stars are two table service credits? Oh my god! What? Two table service credits on for the Disney dining pizza? plan for uh, room service pizza at mm. uh, the All Stars. <sighs> Can you imagine? Slippers delivers. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> So is this is it fresh because they're going to use fresh ingredients and it's going to be like salads, or it's fresh because they're <coughs> it, bringing it to you? Well, it doesn't specifically say. Oh, I think okay. they're just using fresh in the title. I think it's going to be an array of food. They're just using fresh in the title because it's coming essentially in disposable containers. They want to kind of you know nail home the fact <laughs> that it's I fresh. Hope containers it's not, that don't no, upset Corey. <laughs> it's yeah, um, but no, it doesn't say. Keep right little ketchups. So. All right, let's let's see what happens. All right, thank you, Oliver. <laughs> Craig. Okay, uh, if you're walking around Disney Springs um, in the town center area, you can now go into the D Living Store, which was set up originally as like a Christmas shop back in um, back in December, and now it is Beauty and the Beast themed for the upcoming live action Beauty and the Beast movie. And so, uh, basically, the store is kind of makes it look like if you had a ton of disposable money. And you wanted to Disneyfy your house, they're giving you ideas and tips how to do it while also selling you merchandise that's all around the store. And yeah, so it's all Beauty and the Beast stuff yeah. now. now can you buy the furniture? And I don't. No, you cannot buy the furniture. But um, you know, they they have all the decorations hanging in there, paintings. Um, you know, right now it's all Beauty and the Beast related with the plates and uh, little knickknacks crap like that so i haven't been into this one yet i will look through the window the other night after it was already closed um but for the pictures i've seen of the inside so far really it's it's pretty doesn't make me excited about the movie but hey it seems weird to do a whole store around this movie it seems like yeah like they're putting a lot on this movie that well, people love beauty, and, beauty the and the beast no well, it's it's rotating okay okay uh advanced sales yeah, advanced for the sales tickets uh, are selling at what they would expect mm. for like a blockbuster tentpole type film, um, an event film. So there's a lot of interest backed up in this. So well, don't they already have a Beauty and the Beast store? Isn't the one next to Gaston's Tavern a Beauty and the Beast store too? Yeah, but I think they this like plates, more like home living as opposed to you know just. This is it's kind of like a walk in. Etsy or Pinterest board so you can get ideas for how like oh you know this is how I'd want to set up my house looking like this we need Beauty and the Beast plates that description he made made my skin crawl <laughs> <laughs> it's like a walk in Etsy <laughs> <laughs> alright thank you Craig how do you Craig. get those plates out um, before we head out uh, we're going to talk about a thread uh, trending on the boards this week started by 
Vladiz32 on the Theme Parks, Attractions, and Strategies board called Best Extra Cost Experiences. Uh, interesting thread. Uh, people weighing in on, you know, we talk about these upcharges of these different experiences and people complaining about it. I, I thought this was interesting and that these are the ones people really, really like. It's so very happy to see by a mile yeah. the one they are in love with, Club Villain. They absolutely love Club Villain, which we said when we did it. Um, now they've, I know they did it at the end of last year. They did it around Halloween. I don't think they're they're doing it right yeah, now. Yeah, and they announced there was going to be one coming up. This yeah, year. I want to say it picks back up in March. Yeah, okay. maybe. This is something they need to keep doing. Um, this is popular. I mean, and people aren't just saying I liked it. People are saying, like, this was the best thing they've ever done at Disney World. It was wow. that good. Um, so Club Villain, I'm really glad. See, that's where it works. It's expensive, but you walk out of there saying, okay, that was worth every penny. The entertainment's amazing. Character interaction was amazing. The food was great. You really felt like you got something for this party. Um, what they're not liking, dessert parties. Um, a lot of people on the thread were saying that, you know, when they started, like the Wishes in particular, mm -hmm. the Wishes dessert party, when it started was really good. Now it's not. Now same, they feel like it's a waste of money. Same thing with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. They changed Star Wars and now it's not worth it. Yep. See, I'm not a dessert person, but so I'm probably the wrong person to talk about this, but how much dessert can you actually eat? In a night. Well, Can you just keep it depends. On going? If it's a bag of M and M's, probably three or four pounds. <laughs> okay. If it's one of those sickeningly sweet plastic Disney desserts, <laughs> half and you're done. There you go. Okay. And it also, I mean, the dessert parties have changed from paying for the desserts <coughs> to paying for the view. Um, yeah. You know, I when I had friends in town that wanted to do the Star Wars one, they had never seen fireworks at Hollywood Studios, so it helped them. To, to do the dessert party, they didn't have to worry about finding that perfect spot. They already had it right there. The dessert was just an added added bonus to it. And that's what it's becoming, and that's why it's a ripoff. They should just put out bowls of Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> um, also getting a lot of love, the keys to the kingdom, the backstage mm -hmm. magic tours, the Magic Kingdom. Um, that's always been good. Yeah, yeah always agree. been good. And uh, Illuminations Cruises. Yep. And there were people on this thread that were reading about the Illuminations, they had no idea about them. Um, and the, if you haven't done an Illuminations cruise, that, those are great. Those are amazing. Um, Use the bathroom I think the before. Wishes cruises are better. I think they're both good. I, there's, there's a very different experience uh, between them. Um, but, you know, doing a fireworks cruise in general. In general is fantastic. It's especially, it's a great way to do like a little celebration, like a happy yeah. birthday or an anniversary, something they'll, you know, you can pay to have them decorate the, decorate the boat and, uh, bring like cake, a cake on, and and all all sorts of other stuff. You can really do some fun stuff with it. Um, so there's an illumination cruise, um, pirates and pals cruises. Pirate and pals, yeah, pirates and pals fireworks cruises. A lot of people talking about yep. talking about those, and these are you know obviously more geared toward ki kids, but it's families, um, and uh, it's all pirate themed. Doing the fireworks cruise. Um, a lot of people were talking about early morning magic, when you could pay to get in the park a few hours before it opened. Did they stop? They stopped doing that, didn't they? I don't think they're still doing it. <laughs> early morning, where you pay? Fact checkers. Remember, when you you fact could get checkers. into the park two hours before it opened. Yeah. Like as a resort guest. No, 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 no. This was uh, last year. They were doing this as a hard ticket, uh, uh, mm. kind of like the after hours event, but early. But you would go to you go to uh, Lord in Heaven. Um, and, they yeah, had so a breakfast still, at Be Our yeah, Guest. It's, yeah, it's select uh, Tuesdays through uh, through March 2017. Yeah. Okay, so they're still yeah. doing it. Yes. That a lot of people really like that. As I thought, for some reason, I thought they'd stop doing it. Well, I think it's through. It, we yes. have it as through March 7, 2017. We don't have a specific date. I don't, I'm not yeah. reading but. Sundays and Tuesdays. I'm seeing 7.45 to 10 a.m. Uh, Early morning magic. I can definitely say for me, Club Villain, the, 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 the tours, the Magic Kingdom tours, the Illuminations <laughs> Cruise, absolutely. What about the Safari, the 
extra safari at the, Animal Kingdom. Uh, yeah, that's that. the uh, Taste of Africa, right? Or, or the Senses of Africa. Yeah. Taste of Africa, going to see the animals. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> zebra. Uh, that's incredible. That was incredible. If you have not had that experience yet, runs off out of the uh, out of Animal Kingdom Lodge, and they take you backstage at their safaris, and uh, you get to like see like up close with a giraffe and other animals, and that that was. And we get you get breakfast at Boma. Uh, that was a lot of fun, and uh, somebody mentioned the thing we did with was a lunch with a veterinarian. Lunch with an animals oh. specialist. A lunch with a- they stopped doing that though. Lunch with the new year dog while you're there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, plenty of uh, you know, plenty of things that are upcharges that people find are really worth it. I've always enjoyed the behind the scenes tour. I think it was like fourteen dollars the last time I did it. Yeah, it's it not was expensive, a great tour, yeah. and it is a great tour. You I enjoyed to, it. You get to go up in the in the, the greenhouses, the greenhouses at the land. I want to do lunch with a bus driver. I just all the stories they have. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you have to eat this bag sure lunch if, on I'm the bus. I'm pretty sure if you've got twelve dollars, you could probably talk one of them into it. <laughs> Next, it's going to be lunch with a custodian. <laughs> I think for anything that's extra <laughs> at www.info.com. No, when you read any, serious. when you read this they thread, all the rumors. You read any, this thread, and people talk about all the things they've done and what they like and they don't like. It's all about where you are, right? In your love of Disney, because there are people who like those specific things. Like someone talks about Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, you know. Mm-hmm. And if I had a kid and. I would think that was great. It's just not where we are with Disney. I'm still finding glitter from when Finley did. That. <laughs> oh yeah, it's everywhere. It, it's good. Yeah, it's, it is. But they love it. Mm-hmm. They love it. It's so an instant facelift for five year olds. <laughs> they pull so, those yeah, really. they're there tight. Um, all right. So that we'll have a link to that thread in the show notes page, disunplug.com, so you can check the thread out for yourself. See what other people are saying about the various uh, extra events, extra. Uh, upcharge events that you can uh, select at Walt Disney World. So that is going to do it for our show for today. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next week with another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember, stay out of the damn lakes. Have a great week.